Okay. Yeah. Okay, now I'm recording. No. Okay. Are you okay. guys okay with the recording? Yep. Right, Good. fine. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so, restart or reboot. Uh, welcome everyone to uh, WPI System Dynamics Club uh, Collective Learning Meeting, CLM for short. Um, today's topic is uh, a facilitated discussion around what is your academic writing process. Um, I'm Rafat Zaini, I'll be uh, uh, facilitating the discussion. Uh, we uh, will be recording this uh, meeting. Uh, welcome everyone who is uh, in the room here and uh, online. So, uh, uh, the motivation behind this topic is that mostly uh, there are graduate students and even faculty attending this meeting and I think the uh, the product of graduate students and faculty is mostly uh, written documents or written, written papers. And uh, the twist that we are also doing system dynamics, which is uh, very model centric uh, writing. And uh, we know that everyone has a process, whether they have articulated it or not. But uh, yeah, I would like to use the spirit of this meeting to share our experiences uh, while doing the most, uh, uh, you know, activi uh, activity that we are supposed to do, which is writing. Um, so uh, we have uh, discussion topics that goes around model documentation, uh, collecting and sorting supporting literature, uh, the writing, fine tuning a manuscript, citation software. I mean, we can add to the list, but these are just thoughts. Uh, things to start the thinking process and use them as guidelines to uh, through the conversation. Um, and uh, yeah, we can um, go from there. Uh, so I'd like to start by uh, inviting Saeed uh, and Rudy, our colleague, so, to share with us his uh, thoughts around this process. Um, we do have slides, we might type a few things in or probably uh, note taking and then we'll send the slides to everyone uh, the valid resources that we can share with them. So Saeed, take it away. Uh, okay, just let me prepare my screens. This is kind of messed up now. Um, okay, so hello everyone. Um, when I start, so let me just uh, tell you about my experience in, uh, in the process of writing my dissertation and the challenges uh, I, I was faced with and the solution that I came up with uh, during the process. So that might be kind of hel helpful for you folks. Um, so uh, in so in system dynamics or any kind of uh, math heavy uh, kind of uh, discipline that yet you, you are required to write equations, these kind of things. I think there's always a challenge to find the best writing tools and how to couple it with uh, kind of citation management software, etc. cetera. Um, so uh, first of all, when, when you are doing your PhD, I think you spend most of your life behind a uh, screen and the first thing that uh, bothered me was uh, this uh, incapability of uh, usual, you know, uh, writing tools, right? Or like uh, Word or um, OpenOffice or all these, you know, uh, kind of word processing software that has that has kind of white background, which is very tiring for your eyes. So that was, I think, the first. Uh, problem that I had with these uh, writing tools. So um, over time, and the other problem was this formatting things. So you spend a lot of time dealing with uh, formatting issues. I mean, you um, copy a picture in your document. It always goes out of fit, and you always need to, you know, to reshape them, resize them in order to fit them back. Uh, into the document, um, 
and all uh, and also equations. When when you write equations, it's I think a, a huge problem in um, in in a Word or other software. And finally, I think um, when when you want to publish, the quality of your document is not always good. First of all, to, to people always ask you for you know different i mean publication journals may maybe ask you you know for different kind of the styles different you know kind of things and it is a um, you know it is very painful if you want to re uh, change everything that you have you already have developed into different formats different styles etc so um I decided, I mean, at the end of this story is that I decided to use a kind of combination tools, uh, combination of tools in order to make life easier. And in short, what I currently use for uh, most of my uh, academic writing is, first of all, I use Zotero um, as kind of a citation management software. Um, and which is all, uh, free, so that's I think a huge advantage of Sotero, and it is very easy to use uh, compared to I think uh, EndNotes and other citation management software. And I couple this with Emacs, which uh, is a kind of uh, text editor, uh, but it can do uh, a lot of other things uh, other than just text editing. So uh, if you like, I can actually give you a very short demo of how to use these things. Um, I don't know if you are interested or not. So what's well, the response? Yeah, the response is I uh, would like to see it. OK. I didn't believe it. <laughs> OK. Okay. E Max, okay. E like elephant, M like Mary, A like apple, X like. X. I will show you now. Okay. So let me just share my screen. If that is. Please do. Okay. Uh, sorry, I cannot find mouse. So share a screen. You cannot start a screen share while the other participant is sharing, so you need oh, so to stop me, sharing. Okay, I'll stop sharing. Although sharing is caring. <laughs> okay. So sharing means less food. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, which is screen? So, share screen. Do you see the screen now? Hey. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, we can see your screen. Your Zotero screen. So, so I'm not sure if I sh I'm sharing the screen just or just a window. So let me see. So you, uh, what you are seeing now is actually Zotero, which is yeah. a citation management tool. Uh, I think that's very easy to use. So I don't want to take your time for this one. So, um, oops. I think I'm just sharing only the software. Do you see a web browser now? No, you are seeing Zotero. So, oh, okay, so let me just stop sharing and just restart it again because I, I think I just shared. Okay, now it should be fine. Uh, now you see this uh, Emacs uh, website. You, you see it or not? Yes. yes. Okay. So this is Emacs. It's free. Another good thing about it is that you don't need to pay for it. And it is available on all platforms. Um, so you can download it and install it on your system easily. I think uh, the most, uh, the best platform for using Emacs is uh, Linux, but uh, it took me some time to, to uh, install all the feature on, features on the Windows, but um, it's a still uh, doing well. So how it works is actually, first of all, Emacs um, is like this, but it, I'm currently in org mode. So it has different modes of writing. So if, if you open, for example, a Python script, it automatically uh, understands uh, what the uh, um, you know, file type and it automatically adjusts everything for, for the best performance. 
and you can edit it, um, you know, to whatever kind of uh, um, appearance or you know um, interface that you want. It is uh, really simple. But what I'm most interested in this is this uh, org mode, which is a special uh, mode of writing in, in Emacs, and um, it's. I think it can handle anything that you, as a kind of graduate student, would want to have. It's so. First of all, this is this is the uh, file that I'm actually currently in it. This is Note, and the uh, kind of uh, the file type is org. It's a plain text, so let me just open the same. Those are this, the, yeah. the headlines that we have seen in your screen, what are they? Are these uh, like folders or? Sorry, these these headlines? Yes, there are like headings on that. I, yeah, I will get to that. Okay. But before that, let me just tell you that the file that uh, I'm working on is actually this. Um, so this is the file that I that is open now, and you can see. And it is a plain text, so you can easily open this with any other uh, software. For example, uh, a simple text editor. So let me just open this with um, Notepad, which is the most the simplest kind of software you have. And here is the thing you see. However, it is very crowded now, but you can easily. Uh, change these things here. These are all text. There is no code here. So don't uh, actually the codes that you you see here as are actually codes that I've written in the file. But these are my notes. I'm so scared. any Same. yeah. But the pro the thing is that this this file that you see here is looks very simple here, but it is not actually. So there are s mm, huge um, amounts of text. In this, um, um, in this actually document. So you see, each of these headings could be easily fold or, or unfold, and under each heading you have a lot of different text. You see. So, so anyway, can you show us something like a manuscript that we're working on? How does that help you in uh, writing? Yeah. So let me, let me just explain this before going to that one. This org mode uh, works as a kind of uh, note-taking software. And the good thing is that, the, uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's a scary, as you said, and that's because I have all my notes. I mean, all my dissertation notes, all my work notes, anything that I've collected over my academic life is in this simple text file. And that's why it is a scary. But um, that's actually the power of this software because uh, you can use it to collect everything and you, you can have all your notes in just one single text file that you can carry. In, so let me see, what is the size of this it's file? It's 25 kilobytes. Yeah, it is only 25 kilobytes. And um, like the dose time. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So you can carry this file anywhere, anytime, and you can have access to this if you put it in your, uh, for example, Dropbox or uh, Google Drive. And if you you need to urgently access to your notes, you can open it with any software, you know, mobile devices, whatever, and you don't need any software to you, to open that. I mean, you need you still need some sort of software, but those software are available on any platform. Um, anyway, so the thing that you write your notes is just put some headings here. So the stars actually work as kind of headings. So one star is your uh, the highest heading, and if you put two stars, that would be your second heading, and you can do unlimitedly. I mean, three stars, four stars, whatever. And uh, then you can fold or unfold these things. However, the best thing about this. Oh, you, you can actually have also uh, sources. So you can actually write, for example, Python codes 
within this org mode and you run, you can run it. You can run the Python script within the image you know, without, uh, you know, uh, without uh, um, needing to open any other, you know, uh, software to do that. So these are all the advantages of these things. So um, the other thing about, uh, the cool thing about this is that once you write your notes, you can easily, um, you know, uh, convert it to a very advanced kind of uh, format like PDF or anything, and also LaTeX. So let me just show you how it works, uh, for example, in, in a very simple text. So let's go to, for example, um, wait, I, I'm looking for something that as kind of um, mm, notes, notes, econometrics, for example. I want to publish this econometric, econometrics heading. So what I do is just press Control C and Control E. It do, it opens this uh, kind of uh, command list, and I want to publish it to PDF. And let's see what happens. I hope it works. Please don't embarrass me. Um, let me see if it exported. Oh, there is um, there is an error. Definition not found for footnote one. So I need to fix that first. But so perhaps I can convert another thing. Oops, I forgot something. So the thing is that. Uh, when when you want to convert something, you need to tell the software. That, uh, do you hear this this thing here? Do you see my uh, cursor? Yes. So it is asking me if I want to convert the whole buffer, or the whole uh, document, or I just want to uh, export this heading. So what I need to do is just press Control S to tell the software that I want to just export this subtree. And now I convert this. I hope this time it will work. Okay, PDF file produced. And so let me bring it to the, um, to this. So do you see this? Do you see the file? Yes. So this is, so you see, it is a very. It, it looks like a very um, kind of advanced document. I mean, a very nice uh, uh, kind of formatted document. You have a table of contents. It has all hyperlinked, so you can click on each of these uh, sub trees or to, to go to the headlines. And here is, you see, everything is. For, uh, convert it to the format that you want. Even the equations, look at the equations. They are all, um, everything looks kind of like a very well formatted document. So you see, these, I mean, these all, these equations or symbols, math symbols are all in plain text in my uh, original document. But here, when they are converted, they are all, um, in in best in the best format so that's so easy i mean uh that's why i decided uh to use emacs uh, an org mode especially because it's fantastic i, I cannot uh, sell this i mean uh, more uh but it, it's it's i think the best tool that any graduate student can use it's so i mean it takes time for you to to get um to, to learn about the uh, keyboard shortcuts, these kind of things, because you don't, you won't uh, use your mouse, and that's actually another advantage. You won't use your mouse. You should always use your keyboard, but then you need to use uh, these keyboard shortcuts in order to uh, run the comments. And another nice thing about this, because it was the first problem, uh, my first problem with uh, other tools was this. Sorry. Uh, with this customizability, so um, mm, sorry. Okay, so you have these options. 
if I press ball, it goes to this. And if I go to C, uh, customize custom themes again. So here you can actually customize your Emacs. There are some predefined uh, custom themes that you can use. But uh, you can actually also change these custom themes if you want. So, so Said, you said there is a there is a learning curve that goes with that, but definitely you see the advantage of using such a software in helping your writing process. Exactly. How did this help you in getting your thoughts together and documenting the models and citation and writing your thoughts. Can you show us an example of something that you have in progress that you can see? Um, yeah, so um, I need to open other files. So, so I need to, for citations, I think it is very easy. So if you want to cite something, I can actually show you. If you want to cite something, for example, this one, you can, the only thing you need to do is just copy this citation key, okay? You copy this, bring it here in your Emacs, and I don't know, let's do it here. For example, you want to cite this text. What you do is just say cite and paste this here. That's it. And when, when you convert, when you convert your file, then um, it automatically, I mean, you still need to, you know, um, you do, you need, it will convert all these keys into LaTeX, but then in, in your LaTeX, you need to uh, tell your LaTeX file where, where the file is located, I mean, that your uh, bibliography file is located, and then that's LaTeX. Um, will actually add those citations. So how did it influence your process? These are the tools that you're, you're using. But so it, it facilitated. I mean, the best, uh, the, the best thing was that, first of all, as I mentioned, you, you, you have a kind of dark background, so you will, you will be more productive, I think, first of all. The second thing is that you, don't, you won't be distracted all the time by using different software, different tools, different things, and the, uh, the worst part was actually formatting things. So I remember that uh, before that I uh, migrated to Emacs, I all the time was involved with uh, formatting issues. Okay, this picture doesn't look fine. How to make it look better? I mean, uh, is the uh, picture size okay? I mean, and once and uh, while you have a kind of, I mean, when you have a very large document like your dissertation, and if one picture is, I mean, oversized, then you need to, you know, go back and make sure every page fits, you know, every text fits to the page. You don't have uh, um, unnecessary white space in, in your document. That's a huge pain. I, 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 I cannot. Yeah, it's, it's so painful. So that's, I think, the most, uh, the best advantage of using. So uh, you're basically now talking about, like, towards the end, but what's happening? How did it help you at the beginning? Are you writing your notes there as you go? Are you reading literature? Are you typing in your comments yes. there? Uh, this is what I'm trying to ask about. I mean, yeah, that's another advantage. You have everything in one place, so that helps you to focus, to focus on what you are doing. So you don't you you have uh, your notes while while you go forward. You can have everything in one place and just refer to them. You won't so you lose your notes. New, when you start a new project, you start a new file and you start like writing. Discussion. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So uh, for each project, I try to um, actually open one here. So here you see that I have research. Do you see this one? Yes. So under research, I have different uh, research projects. So each of them is a kind of uh, heading. And each of these have some, some subheadings. 
And under these, I, I have actually my notes. For example, there was, uh, for example, let me show you this one. Actually, I shouldn't show you these, these notes. <laughs> but you see, for example, my meetings. So I, I have all my meetings here with dates, etc. cetera. So, um, and each of them has kind of different sub notes. So I, I, I see that there is something about the model structure. Is there, is this where you, do, do you document your notes about models? I mean, everything. I mean, uh, you can document anything here. So yeah, I think modeling part is a kind of a continuous um, uh, improvement thing. So you should always uh, document how you progress through your um, through your modeling because you will learn, and it is always good uh, to know uh, when. I mean, uh, from where you started, with what assumptions you started, how those assumptions changed over time, why you changed all the assumptions, uh, etc. Why you are using, uh, for example, different variables now. What so data are you using? So, I mean, these are all here. Um, in this, I mean, in this, um, for example, model structure, I had demand, for example. I mean, these are just in progress. I don't think it's a good idea to show these things now, but but I have I have a modeling a model development uh, kind of notes also here. So everything is here basically. Uh, the last system dynamics guidance. Did you see where before was showing such a something? Yeah, there's a tool, uh, a tool that he was trying to develop. Is, is, uh, did, did you see that? Uh, no, uh, I didn't see that. And that was for especially for system dynamics models. To me, that also looked a little bit uh, more overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has a, a database so that um, when you create a model, you can also attach the literature and as you develop different versions, it's being tracked. So it's like a, a gateway to your modeling and documentation uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, work. That's, uh, that's what I, I recall. So is, is this the... Uh, uh, Software which is on yeah, the shelf, or? yeah, it's off the shelf free software. Oh, it's free. Yeah, what was it called? E Emacs. Yes, yeah. Emacs. So, uh, what uh, some, I think yeah. I forgot to tell you about this one. So, you you saw this document that I exported to PDF. You can easily export this also to HTML. For example, you also have if, if you see it, my cursor, you have a, also HTML option here. So if I where are you typing? Oh, Sorry, I can't see you. Where are you typing? Ah, the command at the command uh, here. So these are codes. So it's it is saying you that if you press H, this will go to this sub menu. So I press H. So now if you uh, press O, it will convert it to HTML file and open it. So let's see what happens. So this is the first time I'm converting this. I hope this will. Uh, the, oops. I, I made the same mistake. I had to tell the software that uh, I want to convert only this subtree. So I need to press Control S first, and then H, and then O. So, okay. Are you able um, to attach model files too? So I need to open the HTML file now. Let me just um, open this. Um, okay, so it is converted. Now this is the HTML file. So you can easily publish this online with this HTML file. And you see that all the equations are still there. And you have hyperlinks, as I mentioned before. For example, if you um, click on this, it goes directly to this and see this figure. Let's see what's happening. So if you can actually hyperlink to a file. So I, I uh, saved this file uh, on the folder. So it, let me go back. So if you click on this hyperlink, it will open the file. 
So you can document everything. So if you have pictures, if you have models, if you have what, whatever, you can make these hyperlinks and put the files in the same folder, or you can actually give a, a, a direction to, to the file, and then this will open the files. So you can, go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I was thinking when I do something uh, manually, and I still do most of my stuff manually, I know intimately every T and every dot. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and so there is less of a chance of leaving some errors in if I used a software and that did things, these very nice things automatically, would there be a higher chance of leaving errors in? Um, because I may not be so vigilant otherwise. Mm -hmm. Some automation. So just a question in your experience, having this automation, uh, how does it affect the, the chances of leaving some errors in the document? Um, that's of course, uh, that, that's true. Sometimes um, some errors might happen, but uh, you can always do all these things manually. It doesn't change the fact that you can still use this to collect your notes, to document everything. Uh, in, in the conversion process, you can do all these things manually instead of these things. For example, one, why, uh, when you uh, convert this to HTML, you still have the HTML file. Um, I can show you actually. Yeah. And, and, then, and then you can go through the HTML and edit the HTML if you want to do it manually. You don't need to... Uh, but the thing is that if I have such a utility would it be would that reduce my own degree of vigilance uh, I, i'm not sure i don't think so but um here is that uh, like models so we use different models with different purposes and uh what um determines the utility of each uh, model is actually the purpose of things and uh, here and the, the question always is that uh, what do we want to use instead of if, if we don't want to use this one so I, I think the alternative tools that we need to uh, pick if we don't want to go this way is a combination of uh, a word document a word software uh, PowerPoint of all these software, so you still are using other software to to produce your things. So, um, in general, I think, in my experience, I think this one uh, was uh, faster and more uh, productive than other tools. And um, over time, it saved me a lot of time. And uh, how how um, formidable it is to learn this tool. <laughs> Um, it might be kind of formidable at the beginning, but uh, I think it's, uh, it is worth of the investment, uh, especially for graduate students who want to write the dissertation, because writing the dissertation, if you want to use Word, that is so, I mean, I had the same experience. So, um, and at the same, so <laughs> it is funny because I learned to use these these tools, I think Rafat remembers that. I uh, started to learn these tools uh, during my dissertation uh, process. So if graduate students start to learn these tools before that, they can save a lot of time in their academic life in the future. So Said, uh, does it have also spelling checker? Sorry? How about spelling? Uh, it, 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 it has a spelling check tools. So uh, if you see here, because we're used to what you see is what you get environment. So you kind of see whatever we do, we see the So impact. you see, you see, for example, this one, this, yes. un, this red underline, 
this is showing me that this is a kind of um, misspelling. I because see. Uh, because this word is not in the in the dictionary of uh, Emacs. It's automatically checking your spelling. Yeah. Type. You can you can, and the good thing about this is that you can customize it to whatever you want. I mean, uh, you can you can turn it off. You can turn it on. Very documents. For example, Rafa sends me a, a document, and I I cannot can I open it? And if I don't have this, yeah, have so to so. Yeah, that that's actually the best question here. Um, I think the uh, the um, the most difficult part of doing this is uh, kind of collaborative work. Mm -hmm. So the the way you do this is uh, first you can you can convert your file into PDF. So uh, as I showed you, if you can easily by just pressing two keys, you can convert your file to PDF or HTML. So people can read the PDF file, and if they have PDF tools, they can they can collaborate with you. But uh, in practice, in my experience, people are not very comfortable with that. So my solution was that. Uh, so I, I had two solutions. One is that um, use uh, this Overleaf. Um, Overleaf is a kind of online uh, platform. Actually, I can show you. Um, Carlos actually knows about that because Car uh, Carlos and I worked in this project um, on Overleaf. So we worked together on this one. So I can actually show you. Uh, so, so here is actually the project that Carlos and I worked together on. So crop price volatility. And here, this is online, so you need to be uh, online uh, to work with this. And here you see... Carlos, can you join him online? Sorry? sorry? I'm asking Carlos to join you so we can see it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so you see that on the left, on the left you see the latex files. Uh -huh. Some of these things are just codes, but most of the part is just text, or simple text. For example, you yeah. see the abstract here, and if you go down, these uh, actually this is uh, this. Um, I need to go to another file. So, buddy, um, I think um, this is this is the file. So here you see the text, for example, section introduction, and then you have your introduction, etc. On the right side, you see actually the output, how it looks like. So this looks, so actually this was a very good example of uh, how uh, we, uh, I mean, how helpful um, it was to work with LaTeX and all these, you know, these uh, kind of coding things, because when we wrote our paper, it was in a very plain, I mean, uh, the, the simplest kind of formatting, but the journal was asking us to convert our paper into this kind of format. And it, if you can imagine that how difficult it would be if you want to change all these things and also the citation, a kind of references, the style of citations, the figures, everything. And, but in, uh, in this system, it was so easy because the only thing we had to do was just to use their template. So we didn't do anything. We just used their template and everything was converted automatically. Okay. Said, what the question was about collaboration. So how did that format help you receive feedback on your writing? Or like if a student so, <laughs> that, his advisor and he wants him to comment. It, so that that's yeah. I, I, so I think I responded to that by saying that there are two solutions. One is, um, but it was difficult. Of course, it was uh, the, the the only disadvantage of using this versus a Word document because people are very much more comfortable with Word and uh, the kind of track changes feature that uh, uh, Word has. But in in uh, PDF, they need to use. Uh, PDF tools to comment and to, to, to do changes uh, or use this uh, kind of uh, overleaf because here they can also comment for example there is comments features oh, okay. etc and you can also have 
so you can sh save your uh, current version and uh, then uh, the uh, I mean your collaborator can save it as a kind of different version and this uh, this uh, um, website actually has this feature to show you the differences so you can easily go to the changes that your collaborators collaborator has made so that you can jump to do, uh, those things but this this uh, kind of feature is only available online however it is free you don't need to pay for it i mean if you are working on only one document um so yeah th that's the only i think disadvantage um so for example i had this experience with um mike uh so we are working uh on a paper uh and uh, he he doesn't like. I mean, he, he didn't like to learn a new tool or whatever, and he is not. He was not very comfortable with PDF ed uh, editing. So what I had to do, there's also another solution. I think that I didn't mention. Uh, I'm not sure if I have it here, but there is a website. I can actually share it later. That can convert your PDF to a Word document. So what you can do is that uh, you just produce your PDF, convert it to Word, and then use the Word for co collaboration, and then uh, do changes um, in your um, document later. I think I think what ver one version of uh, Adobe Acrobat does create a, uh, a Word file. Actually, I switched to Word very reluctantly. I have used uh, right now. This doesn't exist anymore. Um, there was a page maker. It was uh, word perfect at one time. And all these, in in my experience, were better documents, uh, better programs at that time. In, in particular, page maker was very nice. But mm -hmm. uh, I had difficulty communicating with my colleagues and students, and also. Now that those programs have disappeared, I have difficulty opening those documents. They, they have not kept pace with the changes in the system, so those are like dead documents. So that's that, that's the reason that I, I use Word. I don't like Word. I use it. Yeah. There is also another solution, I think, that uh, so Word document can open this uh, notes file. So if you open, uh, so if you go, if you give, so if you write your actual your notes in a very simple uh, structure, if you you can actually write your paper in a very simple structure, and then give this file to your colleague, and you can actually do all this, but but you need to actually ask ask them to be. Uh, to to keep this style going, I mean, don't change, for example, formatting. Don't add pictures, anything, and keep the simple text structure. And they can collaborate on that file. And once the collaboration, everything is finished, then you can copy and paste every, all the text because this this will be all text. So you can copy and paste all text back into your org file. So that's another solution that they think uh, can work. For for collaboration, but uh, for example, so I still have, I I still have to collaborate with so many different people, uh, but I I haven't given up, you know, using uh, these these tools because they are very still productive. I, I still rather to go through all these uh, pains for for collaboration things etc. But I I will never go back to Word or Microsoft Word any. Uh, at any cost so <laughs> that is my experience and all these tools that I introduced uh, today uh, they are all free so that's I think another thing that uh, graduate students will like them uh, a lot because uh, I think um, this is uh, some I mean payment is some problem for some students so um, yeah that's that's my experience you, you know, the file for all your notes since you, you for uh, your academic life is 225 kilobytes. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's a, you can, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. The floppy disk, and it would be also too big for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can resurrect the floppy disk. <laughs> even print it at a point. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, anyway, that was my experience. I think I talked too much, 45 minutes. Wow. <laughs> well, th thank you, Say. Yeah. No problem. No problem. You're welcome. So, I can actually stop sharing, and if you uh, want to uh, bring back your uh, slides, you can do that. So, Carlos, there is, can you sh so Carlos is saying we can make live changes in the file. So, I think so, he's supporting you too. I think I think Carlos uh, can can um, share his experience because I yeah, think the, uh, when when we started this, I think it was his first uh, time to experience this. But um, yeah, he, he can uh, comment on that. So Carlos, do you want to unmute yourself and uh, so, talk? Um, so Carlos is I I think it's his typing. This is no no microphone, so. Okay, perhaps we can. Okay, let me share my screen. Later. Thank you, Said. No problem. Uh, let me see. Where so we are using Zoom. Yes. Yes. Yes, we are using Zoom. So did I share my? Screen? So you have to stop sharing. Did you stop? Uh, yeah, I stopped sharing. So. Oh, okay. So these are the discussion topics. Uh, Say took us through a tour uh, around all these things through uh, through the tools he's using to document models, to collect literature, to write, to fine tune a manuscript, and even a citation. Uh, but anyone who wants to share his experience about writing, Professor Say, do you want to? Well, I. Um, when, when I was working on my dissertation, there was there were typewriters, and uh, photocopying was expensive. So you went with a notebook and pencil to the library, and you made notes. And uh, yeah, you, you created all this documentation, which was in hard copy form. And uh, yeah, the the software came along. I. I uh, the, the writing software came along and uh, J. Forrester obtained a, a big word processor for us. And actually, I was one of the first few people who could type uh, his dissertation on that word processor. It, it filled a, a room as big as this office with large machines, big spools, and stuff. Uh, one of my committee members kept telling me, oh, Collins, you should buy a, a fireproof safe to keep your uh, data and manuscript because, you know, sometimes by accident it gets burned and stuff. And uh, she was a professor in the, uh, in the planning department where I was pursuing economic work, my, my economic work and concentration. And, uh, uh, she has she had had some experience with her students who lost the data, and uh, she uh, when I told her that I don't need it, she she could not understand because what processing was so new at that time. So uh, I I appreciate the uh, the ability to I mean I appreciate the the uh, availability of this software. But learning something new is, I find it formidable. Sharing is a concern also. And I, I think time is, a, is a, a fixed resource. And you can, for a graduate student, you, can, you have to make that assessment that you're spending so much time in the technicalities and there's so much time left to address the substantive aspects of your work. So, which one, which combination is best for you? And that depends on your learning style. And uh, I, I think for someone like say that would be uh, very, very soft, computer savvy as well as you know, 
don't know, he probably works 20, 48 hours a day. <laughs> yes. This might be a very good option. But then you got to make that assessment. So, and in terms of creating a document, everybody has a different learning style. And I always advise people to, to learn whatever way they are comfortable with. Don't change your style, that's fine. But when you present it, it cannot be presented the way you learned. The presentation format is different. And I, I usually provide it. I mean, I've sent you a presentation format. I, I guess there is this guidelines for writing it, an article. Mm -hmm. So that's how you need to present. And you, you can fill in those topics in whatever sequence you, you feel comfortable with. Uh, but the presentation thread is, has to be created from the point of view of your audience, that how best the audience would understand and how best the audience would be able to follow that. That's my usually my advice. You can learn whatever way you like, you can document whatever way you like, but the final presentation should be in the form that is best disseminated, understood by your audience. So how, how do you go about um, documenting the models? Um, what is your process of documenting your modeling work? Uh, that's the first thing I I do, and I you know you played the model enough, and you want to document it, and while you're documenting, uh, you find out so many loose ends. So I I advise that you start documenting your model as soon as possible because. And, and recognize that's not the final document. <laughs> It'll need to be changed over and over again. So do you use like, uh, you open a file and type in your comments about the model or the references you used for the, some of the assumptions or do you use the modeling software itself because there is like a documenting section in each menu, I guess. Where no, I, I don't use that. I use a Word file. Uh -huh. I would copy and paste from the model, I think, to the word file. Um, if you want to justify a, an equation or a graphical function or something, you, you do that, you cite your literature there also. Uh, lately, I've tried to, I sometimes describe the model in a form that a particular audience understands. That it varies from journal to journal can be described in terms of mathematical equations or descriptions and graphics. And uh, you give the technical detail in an appendix. Uh, and uh, you also I mean, describe the computer runs. Sometimes I've used feedback loops to describe the computer runs. And for us, I often recommend you choosing feedback loops to describe your simulations. Uh, I think I'm seeing more and more use of differential equations and less and less use of feedback loops in describing your equations and I'm dismayed at that. Well, I think that was a strength that brought insights to uh, to a form that was that could probably be widely understood. And uh, so we are, we probably are, are linking more to an audience um, which are not consumers of our model, but I guess the, the articles we are writing that becomes artifacts which I guess you can describe which are needed in your profession. <coughs> Uh, yes, yes. Uh, that's, a, that's an important part because very often 
we're working with some models and by the time we're done, we don't know what, why did we use that equation or that formulation of this graphical function. They, uh, I think getting something to document this uh, is essential. Actually, um, sometimes you can document very, very systematically and diligently, but you may not use those documents. Um, first was very meticulous in documenting various versions of these models. I see. Um, I personally, I, I have models and I don't have usually have a document describing how one version is different from the other. It's, it's memory. Rely on memory. And I, I guess I'll have to stop relying on memory as, as uh, memory may not become so reliable, but I my work is mostly done. I don't worry too much about it. <laughs> um, so, uh, Professor Said, just uh, you, you mentioned the guidelines for writing the paper, and then on those slides, uh, uh, we can also share those files. There is Professor Said's guideline for writing paper, Radziki list of questions that are to be clearly answered in the dissertation proposal. And from my experience, I also compiled paper writing guidelines from different references, and I put them together in a single uh, uh, file. Part of Professor Said's and Radziki is also included in that. We can share uh, those yeah, files. Yeah, share those. those yeah, we can. We can definitely share uh, those. So there is a part which is technical uh, and technical and. You know, the intellectual part, I think, are interrelated because people become more in, uh, stimulated when they use the tools they're more comfortable with, whether it's paper and, pen paper and pencil or, a, you know, undistracted um, interface or different software, etc. But I think at some point it also boils down to articulating uh, your, uh, your argument. We probably have a different session on this, just focusing on that part. But we try to have today uh, a discussion that covers, you know, that spans all these aspects. And uh, in this uh, episode of uh, this topic, we learned uh, about this cool tool and uh, Professor Said's experience. Um, so we will share the, those slides and uh, also those files for those who are interested and uh, have a a, different, a second episode, maybe, uh, as we go along, because uh, everyone has his own process, and I think this is important to know. Uh, no, I think this is a very useful, very valuable discussion, especially for, for advanced graduate students that you are. Thank you. Thank you. Organize this. And Said, we'll probably call you for a workshop on Emacs. <laughs> Online <laughs> you okay. put a simple example and show us the beauty of using such a tool or, yeah. or the beauty. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, I think uh, that would be good uh, because I as as we talk actually I remember kind of other uh, features of the software that I didn't mention. For example, you can easily also convert your notes to uh, to presentation files. So. You, you sh I mean, once you have, I mean, developed your notes, you don't need to go to PowerPoint and prepare presentations. Your, your notes could be easily converted to uh, slides. So uh, I didn't cover that one, but yeah, I can easily show all these features in action if you want. Say, can you create a poster too? <laughs> because this would be the ultimate. <laughs> have a paper, I mean, <laughs> have a poster, we have a presentation. <laughs> All coming from one input. Yeah, why not? I mean, if you, I mean, the posters are, are basically slides. So yes. If, if you develop slides, you can post. So we'll challenge you to create a poster as well. <laughs> we, can, we have a workshop that that's a solution for the graduate student that work on the investment of time. Oh, okay. <laughs> Because there is no money investment. 
Okay, that's cool. Any questions or comments? I can see uh, you, you, you added a converter uh, link to us. Yeah. And it was what they promised. So, yeah. Yes. 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 So it's the end of the hour. Thank you, everyone, now Thank you. for attending. Thank you, Saeed, Professor Saeed, Sean, Carlos, Shia, and Christine for being here with us. And Bahar. Oh, Bahar is here. Oh, thank you for coming too. Well, see you next. Uh, see you after the break. And just a teaser. After the break, we're starting sessions called modeling clinics. Okay. So people can bring their modeling uh, issues and questions and even models to share and get feedback and help. So stay tuned for that. Great. I, I thought this was great. If you do have another one, I think that would be very helpful. I had a couple other questions, but I think uh, another session like this would be, would be great. I thought, I thought this was awesome. Great. Thank you, Sean. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Sure. Take care. Bye-bye. See you. See you. Bye.